Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, December 22nd, 2010, and I'm Darko. Welcome to this news bulletin. We're going to start off with some economic news. Um, new listeners, please visit my website, www.ggnonline.com. That's www.ggnonline.com. This first article up is oil jumps to two-year high on stockpile drop in cold. Oil jumped above $90 a barrel on Wednesday to settle at the level for the first time in 26 months as a third straight weekly drop in U.S. crude inventories and cold weather spurred pre-holiday buying. This next one up, oil prices hit two-year high. Crude prices uh, have reached beyond the $93 a barrel due to the weak dollar and the cold winter weather in Europe and the United States. The euro hits another low versus the Swiss franc. The euro slid to its lowest level against the Swiss franc for a sixth straight day on Wednesday, with losses expected to steepen in 2011 as the eurozone debt crisis weighs. Next up is U.S. stocks at new two-year highs. It says here stocks close at fresh two-year highs as financial companies' shares continue to benefit from recent merger activity. The Dow Jones Industrial rose 26 points, or 0.23% to 11,559 points, its highest close since August 28, 2008. And um, it says here the measure's financial components led its advance with Bank of America up 40 cents or 3.1%, and uh, JP Morgan Chase rose 1.16. And uh, we're going to move on here. Economic growth exceeds forecast. The economy grew slightly faster than the government previously estimated in the third quarter, and forecasters have been raising growth projections for the fourth quarter and for 2011. Next up is home sales. Home sales bounced back. Third quarter GDP raise says here sales of previously owned homes rose in November, offering the latest sign of the economy was ending the year on a more solid footing after a sluggish third quarter. Remember that word sluggish. New uh New. It says uh, Northwest Indiana home sales feel November chill. Realtors sold almost 39% fewer homes in Northwest Indiana in November than they did a year ago, while some of the drop, or with some of the drop, sorry, attributable to soaring sales in November 2009 in anticipation of an expiration of home buyer tax credits. It said here existing single family homes sold in November total 439 and five counties covered by the Greater Northwest Indiana Association of Realtors compared to 719 in November of 2009. And it says November home sales dropped about 16% from the previous month. We're going to keep moving here. UK home sales down in November as the property market showed little signs of life in November. British home sales have fallen at the end of the year according to HM Revenue and Customs. British government borrowing at its most, the Office for National Statistics has released the amount of new public sector borrowing, which is said to be at its maximum level in November. British economy to recover sluggishly. The UK will witness a very sluggish economy recovery next year, sorry, as government's public spending cuts begin to bite. The Confederation of British Industry has warned the CBI's chief economic advisor, Ian McCafferty, claimed that the country went through a good recovery process in 2011, but added that things could take a turn for the worse next year as public spending cuts come into effect. Said, quote, the big early kicker to growth from the turn in the inventory cycle has already passed, and we are now starting to feel the impact of lower government spending, he said. Global rec uh, Recovery Sluggish IMF Chief says the International Monetary Fund Managing Director Dominique Strauss-Kahn says the global economy is facing uneven recovery as well as an uncertain outlook. Quote, the bad news is coming from Europe where the recovery is really sluggish and where growth is the main problem to face. The Economic Times quoted Strauss-Kahn as saying on Friday. Next up is UK's uh, MPs concerned over unemployment. A committee of MPs has raised concerns about early ending of the Future Jobs Fund, a move by the government that is believed to leave youths, youths, the two youths, in long-term unemployment. Over 20 recommendations are sent to the government by the Work and Pensions Committee with the aim of ending the scheme one year earlier. Portugal's credit rating might plunge. The U.S., I think, has uh, lost uh, some of their credit rating. Moody's Investor Service is considering Portugal's credit worthiness, warning that it might downgrade the country's credit rating by as much as two notches.
Some investors fear collapse of municipal bonds across the nation. This is from uh, the AP. Investors have fled municipal bonds in recent weeks, leading to a rising, re leading to rising fears about investments in state and local government debt and increasing the potential for higher rates for when governments look to borrow money. But those involved in the bond market differ on how long the via uh, volatility, sorry, will last and how much of an effect it may have on Florida, which has preserved its high credit rating throughout the economic downturn. It says here the market for municipal bonds or munis is pegged at around 2.8 trillion nationwide. It includes bonds sold for everything from sewer projects to college buildings to transportation infrastructure. Those investments have often been thought to be safer than other assets, largely because states cannot legally go bankrupt. Ah, look at that. And because most governments do almost anything to avoid default. And that's uh, what corporatism is all about. They're going to use your taxpayer, your money as a taxpayer, and they're going to borrow money from the central banks in order to uh, keep their books, uh, you know, afloat. So it said no state has defaulted on its debt since the Great Depression when Arkansas did so. And even in the midst of the current economic downturn, only three governments, Harrisburg, the state capital of Pennsylvania, a city in California, and a transportation project in L uh, Las Vegas have defaulted. So it says, but with state budget shortfalls soaring, investors are getting skittish about the securities. Some investors have even raised the prospect of a crisis in state bonds. With investment guru Warren Buffett warning the summer that the federal government might eventually have to bail out some states or localities, there's that fascism, there's that corporatism kicking in, right? Can't let the economy or the market just right itself. No, you got to go in there and perform the surgery says uh, 16 U.S. cities facing bankruptcy if they don't make deep cuts in 2011. 2011 will be the year of the municipal default. At least that's what analysis like Meredith Whitney predict, as do bond investors that have been fleeing the muni market. There are many reasons to be worried. First, the expiration of Build America bonds will make it harder for cities to raise funds. Second, city revenues are crashing and keep getting worse. Property taxes haven't reflected the total damage from the housing crash. It says here, high joblessness is cutting into city revenues while increasing costs for service. And the first one is San Diego, California. And most of these are pretty, uh, New York City are pretty common. San Jose, California, Cincinnati, Ohio, Honolulu, Hawaii, San Francisco, L.A., California, Washington, D.C., New York, New Jersey, Detroit, Michigan, Reading, Pennsylvania, Joliet, Illinois, Camden, New Jersey, uh, Hamtrak, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, uh, Michigan, uh, Central Falls, Rhode Island, Peterson, New Jersey, and Chicago, Illinois. So keep moving here. Law prompts some health plans to cut mental health benefits. Says members of the Screen Actors Guild recently read in their health plans newsletter that beginning in January, almost 12,000 of its participants will lose access to treatment for mental health and substance abuse issues. Said the guild's health plan represents one of a small number of unions, employers, and insurers that are scrapping such benefits for their enrollees because of a 2008 law that requires that mental health and substance abuse benefits, if offered, be as robust as medical or surgical benefits. By dropping such coverage, providers can circumvent the requirements. So there you go. Link will be posted. Hospital wars to shut in secret NHS cuts. Tens of thousands of NHS workers would be sacked. Hospital units closed and patients denied treatment under secret plans for a 20, pound, uh, 20 billion pound of, uh, worth of health cuts. The sick would be urged to stay at home and email doctors rather than visit surgeries. Uh, it says... Uh, while well, procedures such as hip replacements could be scrapped. So the plans have emerged as health, health chiefs draw up emergency budgets that cast doubt on pledges by Gordon Brown to protect, quote, frontline services. So this is uh, with all those people out there that, you know, are dubbed conspiracy theorists for talking about the health care bill and how, you know, basically the U.S. is going to model Britain. Well, you know, yeah, I keep covering this, so, you I mean, you can see what's going to be coming to the U.S., <clears throat> it's not national health care, and uh, it's just basically fascist death care. Uh, moving on here, and there is something called a death pathway that you can be put on where they cut off your uh, medications and your food and just let you die. And, uh, you know, like like I said, people like me will be considered conspiracy theorists because we talk about this stuff as it is. And don't glorify it and don't wish wash it and put sugar and cherries all over it and say, this is so socialist, this is so great, so liberal. I love this, man. Just 
let my fellow humans die because they can't afford treatment and they have to be a f uh, have death care, health care, government sponsored care forced on them. You know, it's so crazy. The U.S. has the worst health care, I think, in the entire uh, world, and yet uh, so many people can't afford it. And so now they're going to take this horrible health care and then they're going to force people to pay for it. Uh, it says here. Patients deny treatment as NHS makes cutbacks. Telegraph can disclose hundreds of thousands of uh, patients are being denied routine procedures as dozens of trusts cut back on surgery, scans, and other treatments in order to save money, a daily telegraph investigation has found. Student fee savings will fund windmills in Africa. And it uh, says here the 2.9 billion pounds the government will save by increasing the tuition fees matches the amount earmarked for a global warming project. Look at this, guys. I mean, you see how insane this gets, dude? All that protest protesting that uh, you people did out there uh, was for nothing. I don't want to, I mean, I hate to say it was for nothing. I mean, obviously, you know, people are going to be aware that uh, there are citizens in the U.K. that want this. They want, uh, you know, the tuition fees to uh, stay where they were or to be lowered and not raised. But uh, when it's all said and done, of the globalists and uh, your governments are no not very democratic at all, more like dictator dictatorships. They basically tell you how it's going to be. The media uh, just spins everything and tells you how it's going to be. They're basically like PR machines. They're selling the agenda of this global government, and uh, they're just shoving it down your throats whether you like it or not. And um, so here you go. Yeah, so see, they like... This is all about the redistribution of wealth. Um, many of you have heard that. It's part of the Communist Manifesto, one of the planks to redistribute uh, the world's wealth. And so this is what this makes sense, right? To build Africa up, to build windmills in Africa while you can't even take care of your own country. Because it happens here in the U.S. on a daily basis. AIG agrees to, uh, to $100 million settlement and probe, and it says here, uh, actually, we're going to move on because we're running out of time. Deutsche Bank pays half a billion to escape a U.S. tax probe, and that's basically a shakedown, right? And that's what these agencies are for. They're basically, uh, unless they are paid off by these corporatist, fascist companies, corporations, uh, eventually look at uh, a shakedown carried out on them. A little shakedown, right? Give us, give us all your money, or we'll shut you down, and you know, and then they'll turn their head for whatever other type of frauds that they'll be uh, carrying out. Solar takes aim at Patrick bankruptcy and uh, calls filing attempt to avoid a $108 million judgment. And to Indiana Attorney General Greg Zoller said he plans to fight former East Chicago Mayor Robert Patrick's attempt to escape his $108 million debt to the state. So, very honest politician. Interest rates will have to rise sixfold, 60% in two years. Audacity of austerity, 2010 word of the year, because they're trying to get you prepared for it, condition you to accept these austerity measures. Two trillion debt crisis threatens to bring down 100 U.S. cities. China, India sign trade deals, and Pakistan, China sign.